I have a question. Yes. How far has diesel technology in passenger cars come in the last two decades? That's a really good question. Now, for comparative reasons, we have an older car versus a newer car, a turbo diesel versus a turbo diesel, hatchback versus hatchback. And coming up next, we're going to put them on the track. Old versus new. Guys, we're focusing more on technology than the cars themselves, but the question is, how are we going to compare the two? I think uh, I would like to propose three tests. All right. How loud they are, we can measure the sound. Yes. How clean they are, we can measure the particulate emissions just by seeing and looking at it. Right, okay. And then how about we do a drag race to measure the power? Okay, that sounds cool. He went off again! I love it! I've been really busy with the Fastlane truck website and channel, so I don't drive my old Golf diesel very much anymore, and that's a shame. And this has been a reliable car overall, almost 196,000 miles. And if you're wondering about the little uh, check engine light, it's a glow plug issue, and I've had this issue throughout the years. Replace glow plugs, replace the harness for the glow plugs. But other than that, it's been a solid, solid car. No problems with the turbo, no problems with the engine, no problem with the transmission. Really, really solid car. And check this out. I have heated seats, five levels of heat. Nathan just has three levels of heat in his seats. Welcome to my fairly quiet office on the road. This vehicle actually is under hard acceleration relatively quiet, especially for a four-cylinder diesel. It sounds like a somewhat harsh regular four-cylinder. Seats are comfortable. The interior is well laid out, but there are huge panel gaps almost everywhere and a lot of hard plastics. What I really like is the control layout in this area here. I think it's really well done. It's very clean and a good sized screen. Pretty much the rest of the vehicle is an easy vehicle to get along with and just as importantly, comfortable. This cruise is surprisingly quiet. I thought it's going to be louder. Behold, a 137 horsepower turbo diesel engine. It puts out 240 pound-feet of torque at around 2,000 RPM. It's a 1.6 liter Ecotec, and on the highway, if you get this vehicle with the six-speed manual transmission, you can get up to 48 miles per gallon. As it is with the nine-speed automatic transmission, 45 miles per gallon on the highway. That's really good. I'm impressed. Okay, this car is my baby. I bought this car brand new over 16 years ago and under the hood is a 1.9 liter turbo diesel engine with, get this, 90 horsepower and more importantly 155 pound-feet of torque. So this is a still a torquey little turbo diesel. It's made it to a 5-speed manual transmission in this case and this is a fully loaded GLS model and Nathan was bragging over there about fuel economy but look at this, I have my original sticker. 49 mpg on the highway this vehicle uses diesel exhaust fluid depth that one doesn't and well as you can see down here the only thing that's left over is some moisture it really does help in terms of treating the exhaust system Wow, that's really warm. But look at this. It's completely, completely clean. Okay, talking about emissions with these two cars, um, I was gonna do a napkin test where you put a Kleenex underneath an exhaust pipe and see how much particulates come out. 
but I just revved the car a couple times and uh, some soot came out. Looks like the Exxon Valdez. Bear in mind, I do get my car emissions tested in Colorado every single year because it's an older car and it always passes with flying colors, about 8% opacity. So even so, you can see clearly there's some soot. Okay, go ahead. Wow. Yeah. A little bit more soot. I think we need a chimney sweep. This is, um, well, this is an example of what happens when you don't have a depth system. There's other systems out there that are modern that also take out these heavy particulates, but the bottom line is I'd rather this on a napkin than in my lungs. I think it's extraordinary that your car is running as good as it is considering how old it is. Yeah. And I mean, video tape. That's, that's. <laughs> so Volkswagen gave me a VCR tape, a video tape when I purchased the car in 2002 to describe some of the features of the car. Guys, my car is basically a fully loaded 2002 Golf GLS TDI. Um, the only thing I don't have here is an automatic transmission. But I have a sunroof, I have heated seats. Um, they didn't offer leather seating in that model year. Um, at least I looked and looked and looked when I was purchasing the car and I couldn't get a leather seat option. But these cloth seats have lasted really, really really well I think. Uh, I almost have 196,000 miles. I honestly do not know how this vehicle will perform off the line. Um, but I, and I, oh, there we go, traction control. I'm shutting traction control off usually. That makes for a faster car. Oh my goodness gracious, look at that. Kind of, uh... You know what's strange? What? I mean, not that I kicked your ass, that, that was good, but I thought I'd do it by a larger margin. Yeah. So, maximum torque kicks in around 2,000 RPM. This is a diesel, so its red line is at 5,000, which for diesel, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a lot. It, you know, it's such a shame that Volkswagen ruined the game for everybody else because when I was overseas, I sampled a lot of diesel vehicles that were for European consumption. And they were excellent cars. Good torque, fun power, tossable cars, even though they had a fairly heavy power plant. And it's a real shame that in the United States, especially with this big scandal that happened, people aren't embracing clean burning diesels. The difference is obvious. The new diesel car, the cruise diesel, is cleaner. Yep. It's quieter.
quieter. Yep. And it's a lot faster. It is, it is, and it's nearly as efficient as your car. I think that says a lot for the amount of work that's gone into this engine. According to General Motors, 24,000 hours worth of R&D. He's not rolling in a ball of fire. That would have been kind of cool on video, but I don't know if he made it. He seemed determined. It was almost 13 seconds, but I didn't make it. <laughs> yeah, he really did go off, I think. Uh, it was awesome. Hello. Did you go off both sides? It really looked like it. Yeah. That was pretty awesome. Um, I can't quite make it. It's maybe just over 13 seconds. He went off again! I love it! Okay, so you need a racing stripe in order to get that extra power. Or something. We want to take out the back seat and try again? No. We could probably remove the spare tire and... No? Not so much? Uh... Wheels look good. Thanks. It's dirt on them. They're custom wheels. Custom dirty now. It's pretty cool, you look like a WRC guy. Flying right off the tarmac right onto the dirt. Was I like uh... Sebastian Loeb. Oh. But how do we measure value? I have my sticker right here. All right. Uh, final price on my car was $19,900. And that's $2,002. So if you adjust for inflation, that's about $27,000 for that turbo diesel. Interesting. Well, mine starts at around twenty-six, but it goes up to this one as equipped, $31,125. So that's really interesting, I think. If you bought a base hatch diesel yeah. with a manual, right. you would be kind of lower in the price than what my diesel was all those years back. I think that's quite possible. You know where I think diesels should literally just be mandatory? Um, most crossovers. All these people are buying these really heavy ass crossovers, which are glorified wagons. I don't hate crossovers, by the way. I just, I know what they are. They are large wagons and they're heavy. Is he struggling to make it to 60 on this runway? Huh, I really hope it's not a 12 second car. Oh, uh, manual shifting this thing? Don't try it, <laughs> it sucks. Here we go. Good take off. It's going through the gears. Ooh, it looks like he needed the entire runway. This is about 700 feet. So now I'm guessing uh, about 12 seconds because I think this runway is around 13 seconds long as far as um, dead stop acceleration. Oof, a mile above sea level, uh, the car is struggling. So, fast time of the day, 9.73. With traction control off, a little tiny bit of uh, traction loss, you will be able to get this car to go relatively quick for a little diesel. Fastest time was 9.73. What? Yeah. Oh my gosh, you were using the entire runway, so I was thinking you were slower for some reason. Well, what I was trying to do is find a way of making that even faster. Okay. But no, there's no other way. I don't need the entire strip. I could have done it a little bit less, but once again, I was trying different things to get speed. 9.73? Under 10 seconds? Under 10 seconds. Well, that's not a bad result. And the other results were all around 10 seconds. Okay. I think that value really is part of this whole thing because you get better range and way better fuel mileage when you get a diesel, right? 
that's really interesting but i'm happy to say that my old car is still fairly efficient okay hey by the way show everybody your finger you voted too hey for the fast lane car this is nathan and andre we'll see you next time Thank <laughs> you.